Hello, BAME farm fans. It's corn planting time. It's May 22nd. Getting the first corn in. Doing pretty good. Any corn planted in May, it's doing pretty good around here. If it's planted before May, well, that can be hit or miss. And you know, maybe a lot of folks did this year because we had a few good days at the very end of the month, which is very uncommon for us, the end of April. But if I knew that I could be planting corn and be done near-ish Memorial Day, I would take it. Because there's been so many years, not that I've been farming that long, where it's been hard to get much of a start before May. I might as well pop off the seed. I don't think I'll make it until the next time we reach our fertilizer. What are we planting this year? Anybody heard of this place? Rob C. Co. They ended up buying out Federal, and we liked Federal. Federal was the supplier for when we got seed corn from Real King. It's good corn. You just had to know what you were doing when you ordered it, or looking for it in the store. The problem was nobody at Real King knew what they were doing. So that made it a real challenge to get exactly what you wanted. This is a 108 day conventional variety. It's hoping for a bit shorter, but they really recommended this one for our needs of ear corn and uh, we'll say seedling vigor in cold, wet soils. Even though I did tillage to try to, you know, warm it up as best we could. We had a little bit of rain last night, or this morning actually. We got lucky, only got a tenth. We got missed by the rain. So that's, that is a fantastic part. So we're still going planting. And then we also have some 105 day, but that won't get planted until I guess later once we get all the 108 in the ground. It is a medium flat seed. We're using a C6 IH plate. And that is all labeled here on the bag, which is fantastic. Because uh, that's the other reason why we like you know, federal, and then this company seems to be doing a good job, is they actually size the seed. Like it's well graded with a plate size. Decent sized seed, 53 pound units. And they even put like the, you know, the plates there. They call it an F2. It's treated with Cruiser Max. Myco Gold. It's a biological blend, kind of like a fungicide of sorts. Dry seed treatment suspended in talc. And uh, you put two ounces for 50 pounds of seed. Um, let's see, what do they say? Endomycorrhizal fungi. Bouveria. Bassiana fungi, uh, and a whole lot of other little microorganisms for which I don't want to sit here and butcher them all. I could probably figure out how to say all of it, but that is not the plan. So it's like micro amounts of everything, but it's touching the seed. To hopefully get it off to a great start and grow fast and outpace the rain and grow lots and lots of corn so we can flood the market and further uh, run the price down. But hey, if I'm doing this and not everybody else is, at least maybe I'll have more corn than everybody else, right? Huh. Huh. Yeah, who am I kidding? Hmm. So, dummy me didn't remember to get the scooper when I left the barn. But, thanks to sweet corn planting, we have these lovely milk cups. And I can just pour out two ounces on top of everyone, and I'll come through with a stick. You know, it's uh, it's not an exact science. Yeah, it's pretty close to two ounces. I'll come through with a stick and kind of mix it in, and hopefully as the seed goes down, it just kind of mixes itself. Okay, about four ounces left. Maybe one row will be a little over-treated, but I'm sure you're not going to over-treat it. Okay. 
Last row. Yay, dust. <laughs> Actually it smells kind of sweet. They probably put some sugar in there or something to feed these things. Here's my stick. My stick is an extra long-ish screwdriver and we twirl it around and we're just gonna let gravity do its work. And as the seed bounces and stuff in the box, it'll work its way through. It's like I'm mixing cake batter or something. One thing I haven't checked, because remember last year, if anybody remembers previous planting videos, I had to go through and scrape the seed treatment off the plates. Because the seed company was very good at coating the seed, and there was so much extra that it was just rubbing off on everything inside the boxes, and especially coating the plate. And I had to sit there and peel it off the plate between uh, refills of the planter. So now it's time for fertilizer. This is the most painful part. We bring out a bag, flop it on top, cut it open, and dump it in. Um, but yeah, this, this company, Rob Seco, is based out of Nebraska. Maybe a little bit bigger operation than Baldridge. Baldridge, unfortunately, shut down as a mom and pop shop, and they retired. Okay, we got a bag. Come over, grab our handy dandy sharp object. Go all emo on it. Doesn't have to be too sharp to make give a good laceration. See a flathead screwdriver, we dump them in. I miss. Now, well, having the flatbed. We're doing this off a hay wagon, because remember from that video when we picked up the silage chopper, well, I don't have brakes, so that's annoying. I haven't fixed those yet. Only so much I can repair in a day. Well, this should bring back some fond memories. It sure is tickling my fancy. That two years ago, when I last planted corn in this field, it was like May 15th. We could still see the locust trees blooming and smelling so wonderful. Well, we're a week after that, two years later now. Um, and hopefully we don't have a similar, similar ridiculous weather pattern to which I have to come back here and replant. Because we're in the middle of the section that I had to replant. It's just wide open and flat back here. The front has a nice roll to it. And then that helps the rain get away. So we're looking at the planter monitor. See the fertilizer shaft is spinning. If you look real close there in the middle towards the back of the planter, we see that knob spinning underneath the insecticide box. That is the planter monitor. Uh, and also if we lift it up on the go, before we get it too high, we'll see it dribbling fertilizer and seed on the ground because we're like we're not high enough to disengage the drives. Okay, yay point rows. Lots of crossover there. What a blast. hard to see on camera from up on the 
the tractor, we'll get a nice look at the planeter monitor here. Got some fertilizer, a seed, some fertilizer, a seed, fertilizer and seed, and a seed, and fertilizer. So, the planter is working. And I can see that from the tractor probably better than I can get the camera to zoom in to show you guys. So we quick hopped off here. Well, back to it. Not making much dust thanks to our little showers and stuff, which is nice. Don't, don't always like to be an elephant. Covered in dust. Of course, it'll blow away today. The wind is very, very blowy and blustery. Ooh. So we have population set up. Dust. Over 28,000. Then we're putting down two to 225 pounds of triple 15 with lime in it. So that's kind of how we're sort of keeping up with lime. Just spoon feeding it on. It's not how I want to do it. I mean, it works, it puts it right where the plant is. I would like to find a better source of lime than the rock dust. And something that's actually going to be useful in my lifetime. And the stuff coming out of the quarries locally is really not it. And anything that's any good has to come from pretty far away. And I am not equipped to efficiently, in a timely manner, in between muddiness to get lime on very well, unfortunately. But it's nice when we get it all mixed together, like the pelletized lime and stuff, with the, with the starter. Okay, we cross one row. stop a little bit every time because I can't lift it up quick enough to disengage everything. And I don't like to dribble seed every time. We'll save a few nickels worth of seed every time we turn around just because we can. I usually don't come to a stop but it's hard to like hold the camera and run the levers all at the same time. Yee-hoo! That's rain. That's a red sunset over there. Well, I don't know what that means. Red at night, sailor's delight, but this must be some sort of sadistic sailor. Um, because there was a nice little thin, you know, pencil mustache line of rain running across Indiana to get here. Um, and I haven't looked at my phone lately, but I think it's odd that that is west. And, well, it's, it's red and pretty, or it was, before we went behind the trees. We're racing the rain and the light. I'd rather race the finished last night and well we got it back to the barn this morning but finished in the rain you can see all the raindrops and stuff I got soaked it wasn't too terribly heavy it fell apart a lot compared to what it could have been but we've been on the 12 hour plan we get about a tenth of rain every 12 hours and it's usually about 9 30 and 9 30 but a tenth can be dried off and absorbed or dry-ish enough to get going I gotta get back out to the field for another fun video. So I'll catch you guys later for fun with more fun farming action.